Hello, I'm Frank Itson here at my law office, Frank Itson, PA in downtown Orlando, here to explain to you what you have to prove to obtain Social Security benefits. Typically, we're going after Social Security disability benefits, and I had a couple of hearings in the last couple of weeks, and I thought I would describe to you what you have to prove to the judge. And I'm going to take you back in the war room because I got one of the cases laid out, and I think it would be helpful for you to hear what questions you're going to have to ask what questions you're going to answer, and what the judge is looking for in order for you to get a favorable decision from the Social Security Administration. Um, this is kind of my workstation for one of the things. We have jurisdictional stuff here. I've got three sets of exhibits. I'm kind of old school. I like to look at it. Um, I had to write an opening statement to the judge, and these are my notes for asking my clients. Um, when you get to the judicial office um, we go in together and I'm sitting next to you this judge was appearing by phone from another state and there's a secretary sitting there taking notes as well as a vocational rehabilitative consultant it's a person that can describe what kind of jobs are out there in the market so I put together many many years ago all of the questions that a judge told me were gonna be asked, and whether the judge asks them or I ask them, they're always the same. And I typically send these questions to my clients. We go over them at length. But before we do that, the judge wants to make sure we have the jurisdiction limits right, but there's enough insurability. We enter all the evidence. There's about five or seven minutes of just some legal talk between me and the Social Security judge then they'll either start out or I'll start out. And you've got to prove a few things. One, you cannot do what you've done the last 15 years. So if you've been a cab driver, retail market, blueprint rider, you got to prove you can't do those. Secondly, it's age driven. It's helpful if you're over 50 years old. It's not the end of the world, but that is a very big factor. The closer to 62, the easier it is. Uh, do you have any transferable skills? So you were a cab dispatcher in New York City, car 54, go to First and Elm. Can you do that here in Orlando, work for mirrors? That's an issue, and if you can, then you're not disabled. And then finally, that they cannot find you a job light duty on an uninterrupted basis. And you gotta prove that you can't be a toll booth collector, a security guard, greeter at Walmart, um, eyeglass assembler, anything mundane that you're sitting down. And the way that you do that is I meet with your physicians and we get some documents written on what your restrictions are. The more restrictions, the better. So if you have restrictions of no lifting over five pounds, no repetitive stooping, no sitting, no squatting, no overhead lifting, no climbing ladders, and all you've ever done has been a welder, we got that part of the claim. It's going forward that's difficult. What precludes you from doing the jobs I mentioned? Best way is, a lot of times I'll bring in the psychological overlay and the prescription overlay. If you're taking pain meds, they make you dizzy, tired, and fall asleep, then I'm not gonna have you working at my job, and I darn sure don't want you doing anything physical. If, unfortunately, your condition has caused you distress, that prevents you from keeping up and the pace, the inability to do quotas, the inability to integrate new things, be presented with new tasks. If you can get that from your treating physicians, then we get the past goes away and the future goes away. Lastly, the voc rehab person. He gets in there, he or she, and says, these are the jobs they used to do, and under the Department of Labor guides, X, Y, Z is this, and then the judge will ask them to apply the restrictions, and usually they'll say they can't do past relevant work. And then there's this interplay between the judge and the voc rehab where he starts layering your future restrictions on and keeps asking them, and then the revoke person will go, there's 46,000 jobs worldwide, nationally, and there's a 3,500 locally, can my client do the job? 
If he says yes, we got a problem. If he says no, he doesn't. If he says he's yes, then finally I can ask questions. And then that's where, if you've got the right legal team, you've got the right questions to turn that vote into an ally of your client. So, if you've been injured on the job and you need help with your Social Security disability, visit my website, frankitson.com. Hopefully this has been helpful. Share it if you want and visit frankitson.com anytime. Thank you so much.